welcome to Sniper's Hide. Uh, we just did a little test. We set up two identical scopes, both Schmidt and Bender 3 to 20s, uh, mil mil on a Spartan Tactical 6.5 Creedmoor. What we did is we leveled this scope to the fall of gravity, and we leveled the other scope to our natural cant. We moved the rifle slightly over to fit our shoulder pocket a little bit better, so it was a little bit more consistent. And then we leveled the reticle to the fall of gravity using a plumb line. This rifle was leveled to a level rifle. This uh, scope, rather, was leveled to us. What we found, and we'll go down range and take a look at the target, was minor variations, and some of it could have been the tenth of a click that we moved. We also had a variable wind a little earlier today. Uh, the wind was anywhere from 8, and now it's down to about 5 miles an hour. So she saw some small fluctuations in that. But elevation between 0.5 and 0.7 were on the target. 0.6 hit, and we went back several times because we did see a small variation. We wanted to make sure that we weren't a tenth off, uh, kind of running over. The MTC turrets had that heavy thunk. Sometimes we'll run over that 0.6 and hit the 0.7 and then uh, making sure it was good. For those keeping track, like I said, we had a uh, eight mile an hour wind a little earlier. At the end of the test, it was down to about five. So we used about a 0 .7, 0 0.8 in the beginning, and we used a little less than a half, about three tenths of a mil at the end. Muzzle velocity, shooting factory Hornaday 140A maxes, 27.10. So you can run that in your calculator. Our uh, temperature here is 70 degrees, DA for those looking is 6,600 feet, and our barometric pressure today is 2,507, so 2,507, 6,600 DA with 70 degree, uh, degree temperatures. We didn't find, I mean, those shots lined up. There was some slight variation, but when we went back and shot, we put rounds exactly where we wanted to. So I'm going to say it might have been an operator error. But having the rifle slightly canted, and we're talking minor, less than a full degree, with the reticle then turned and lined up with the fall of gravity, we saw no ill effects. Thousand yard target. We double checked swapping scopes on the GDIs to make sure that we had a good 100 yard zero going from one to the other so there was no variation in the zeros. Uh, we made sure that was dead on. But we were able to drop down, dial in the 8.6, which was the money spot, on the target, boom, hit. We actually had some really good groups uh, sub MOA down there. So um, really, your dope is your dope. So if you slightly can't that rifle but line the scope up to the fall of gravity, your dope is going to be your dope. With the wind, we did not see anything crossing or going like that to mess the target up. And these were all zeroed at 100. We didn't go and re-zero them at 1,000. We just had what our dope was for that, and we dialed it up and out there. So there was no, um, like, uh, known distance course zero, so to say. But let's go down range and take a look at that target and, and let's analyze what we see. Okay, here's our target. Our initial group with a level rifle level scope was right here. Um, I had it marked as 8.6 mils and I was using 0.7 of wind. I uh, had one that was thrown here with the level scope level rifle, um, but that was when the wind led up. Like I said, we had varying uh, 8 to 5. Then I swapped scopes and I went to a canned scope, can, uh, canned rifle with a level scope. Here is that, 8.6 is what I had, 0.8 of wind. Took a little bit more wind, but there was a slight variation. About the same size group, in line on the target where I was, so it wasn't off that much. Um, the 0.8 actually brought me a little bit more in the center, this was more on the edge. I then went back to double check my numbers. The Smith Bender has really close and being that one tenth just past the, um, the, the, the MTC turret, the heavy click, I wanted to make sure that uh, it wasn't me and I actually went one too many so the 8.6 was really 8.7. Well that sort of came in line. 
I did a level rifle at 8.7 and it lined up here. A level uh, canted rifle at 8.7 that went here. Then I did an 8.5 here and an 8.6 here. These two canted. Um, so it put it in line with where it should be. 8.5 down at the bottom, 8.6 more in the center, 8.7 up by the shoulder. So that fell in line with what it should be and I varied it up. Level rifle, level rifle, level, can't, 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 can't. So I was still able to kind of pick and choose my spot on the target. And this is an 18 by 30 inch target. Here's 24. So that one tenth was about three and a half inches of movement, which is what we're seeing. And that would have accounted for what we, we, we saw. So all that tracked true was saying maybe I was just slightly off uh, coming off of that heavy detent. But still, we had no ill effects. Uh, half mil of wind here, half mil of wind here, both the same, both hit roughly in the same spot, half mil of wind here. That was here, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 lined up here for the wind. So we don't see any crazy variations from having the rifle slightly canted. Like I said, my cant is less than one degree. Your bubble level has 0.8 of accuracy from line to line. So I'm within the accuracy of a bubble level, but I'm moving it over to my more natural hold. So there's the shots on target, and that's what it looks like. So you guys can, can make your own determination, but I tend to set my rifles up to my natural hold, and this is the result. I put them in the same spot on paper as if I did it the other way.